The connections between all of Pixar's films mean they're together and telling a grand overarching story. That story includes inanimate objects becoming sentient, animals becoming like humans, and humans destroying the planet. Welcome to The Binger. Ever since Pixar burst onto the scene with Toy Story in 1995, each new film from the studio has been cause for celebration. Pixar consistently creates some of the most creative, compelling, and visually detailed movies out there. On top of that, the movies are littered with Easter eggs. These Easter eggs and other commonalities between Pixar's films have served as a jumping off point for theories about the Pixar universe. And there's so much evidence for some of them, they just have to be true. In this video, we're talking about some of the most surprising Disney Pixar universe theories that actually make sense. Prepare to have your mind blown. Whenever fans go to see a new Pixar movie, they know to be on the lookout for Easter eggs. The team at Pixar always includes references to the studio's various features and shorts in their latest movie. At one point, they even posted a video on the official Toy Story Facebook page that pointed out some of Pixar's more obscure Easter eggs. Many people just attribute all of these callouts to the filmmakers having fun. Who doesn't love a good Easter egg? However, some fans have a theory that those Easter eggs actually come from a very specific source in the Pixar universe, the witch from Brave. Support for this theory comes from the fact that all the Easter eggs in Brave appear in the witch's workshop. If you look closely at the scene set there, you can see a wooden toy carved in the shape of a Pizza Planet truck. And that's despite the fact that Brave takes place centuries before cars and trucks were invented. There's also a carving depicting Sully from Monsters, Inc. hanging on one of the walls. That leads us to our next theory, which also helps strengthen the theory that the witch is responsible for Pixar's Easter eggs. A particularly popular fan theory suggests that the events of Monsters, Inc. are pivotal to all of Pixar's films. And the reason for all that rests on Boo, the little girl who stowed away into Monstropolis. See, when Boo entered the city with Sully, she found a whole new world. She became especially attached to Sully, her kitty. So when he abruptly disappeared, it made a big impact on her. After that, she spent the rest of her life trying to figure out where Sully went. One of the key things she remembered from her time with Sully is that doors were key to her being able to find him. So Boo figured out how to use doors to time travel. And eventually she went back in time to what she believes is the source of magic of the doors, the Will-o'-the-Wisps. Of course, the only time the magical Will-o'-the-Wisps come up in a Pixar movie is Brave. So Boo used the magical doors to go back to medieval Scotland, the setting for Brave, and became the witch from that story. That's why that carving of Sully is so prominently displayed in the witch's workshop, and why she knows about the Pizza Planet truck. She's seen it in her time hopping. Also, since she can time travel, Boo the witch is able to deposit Easter eggs throughout the Pixar universe, either on purpose or by accident. In fact, in Brave, we see the witch changing things by going in and out of doors. Sound familiar? The idea that Monsters, Inc.'s Boo grew up to be the witch from Brave is a part of a larger theory that's received a lot of attention from fans. Simply called the Pixar Theory, it states that all the Pixar films are connected and can be laid out in one giant timeline that spans centuries. The theory was first fleshed out by Uber fan John Negroni in 2013. Since then, Negroni and other fans have added and updated the theory as Pixar's released new films. So in the case of Monsters, Inc. and Brave, the character connecting the two movies is Boo. And in fact, according to Negroni, the connections between all of Pixar's films means that together they're telling a grand overarching story. That story includes inanimate objects becoming sentient, animals becoming like humans, and humans destroying the planet. So according to the timeline of the Pixar theory, first the toys from Toy Story became sentient and eventually so did the cars from Cars. Similarly, Finding Nemo includes nods to pollution in the ocean, and that eventually led to the uninhabitable environment of Wall-E. One of the things we learn from the movie Wall-E is that the mega corporation, by and large, is at least partially responsible for destroying Earth. Over time, B&L became the corporation people relied on for everything. After a while, it even took over the world's governments. Initially, though, it started small. In fact, we've seen the By and Large logo on batteries powering Buzz Lightyear in Toy Story 3 and construction equipment in Up. In fact, one theory states that By and Large is the company that wants to drive Carl from his home in Up. 
And that action is the point where by and large's lack of care for people and the planet starts in earnest. According to the theory, the B&L takeover of Carl's Block is the first hint that the company has bigger plans than selling consumer items. The company has its eyes set on global domination. And although it takes hundreds of years to get there, eventually B&L does take over the Pixar universe's human world. There's even been speculation that all in all, the company that provides fuel in the Cars universe is actually by and large. In Cars 2, there's an energy crisis that is partially driven by all in all, a move that sounds like something out of BNL's playbook. So even centuries later, the evil corporation could still be operating under a different name. There are several Pixar movies that center on human characters. However, there are also quite a few that focus on animals, inanimate objects, and even monsters like Toy Story, Finding Nemo, and Cars. One theory centers on exactly how animals learn to talk and act like humans in the Pixar universe. This again goes back to the witch in Brave. It's her spell that turns Mariah's mother into a bear. Underneath her furry exterior, she's still a human woman, and as a result, Mariah's bear mother behaves in a very human-like way. So the witch's magic creates human-like animals. Also, if the witch is Boo, she could be trying to figure out how Sully, a being that's never been seen in her world, came to be. That could mean that she's used her magic to experiment on humans and animals to try to make something like Sully. And in the process, she created animals far more intelligent than the norm. Over time, those animals procreated and evolved. That eventually led to animals who could talk and had human-like aspirations like Remy the Rat from Ratatouille. Or the advanced underwater society that includes schools and freeways in Finding Nemo. A variation on this theory says that the Pixar movies exist in an alternate timeline. In that timeline, the asteroid that destroyed dinosaurs in our timeline never hit the Earth, as seen in The Good Dinosaur. As a result, the animals from a millennia ago never went extinct. Instead, they continued to evolve. In the process, they developed sophisticated cultures of their own. Another theory that traces the sentience of inanimate objects in the Pixar universe back to a different movie, The Incredibles. In The Incredibles, Buddy comes to resent superheroes. He doesn't have any powers, but desperately wants to be seen as a hero. So he adopts the persona of Syndrome and uses the technology to bring other superheroes down. He develops an Omnidroid, an artificially intelligent robot, to learn the fighting styles of every superhero and take them out. But the Omnidroid goes rogue. It even realizes that Syndrome took advantage of it by ordering it around and turns on its creator. While the Omnidroid was destroyed in the end, its technology wasn't. So the technology lived on in other machines, which retained a certain level of sentience. In addition, the zero-point energy that powers the smart machines also began to be absorbed by inanimate objects like toys. That's not the only theory about energy in the Pixar universe. Another theory speculates that emotions are a powerful source of energy. The idea of emotions as a source of power is a theme that comes up in several Pixar films. In Toy Story, for example, a child's love and joy enables toys to thrive. However, the best example of emotions being an energy source happens in Monsters, Inc. In that movie, the monsters literally use the screams of children, their expressions of fear, to power their city. That is, until they find a better way. When Boo visits, the monsters learn that laughter, an expression of joy, is more powerful than screams as a source of energy. So both Monsters, Inc. and Toy Story are built on the idea that joy and love can be used as energy. That leads us to our next theory. This one connects Inside Out to Monsters, Inc. through the characters of Riley's imaginary friend, Bing Bong. You remember Bing Bong, he's a part elephant, part dolphin, part cat being. And this theory proposes that he isn't just a figment of Riley's imagination, but is actually her monster. Riley would have met Bing Bong at a very young age, so when she looks back at her memories of him, she makes sense of them by believing he was her imaginary friend. However, if this theory is true in the Pixar universe, Bing Bong was very real, and he was coming to visit Riley to collect her laughter. That means while Bing Bong's memory eventually became part of Riley, Monster Bing Bong is still out there bringing joy to other kids. In fact, Inside Out as a whole makes a pretty strong argument for the power of emotions. Not only does the whole movie revolve around how emotions impact people, for Riley, the lead emotion is joy. So Pixar's movies seem to be arguing that, for children, joy is the most powerful emotion. So powerful that it can bring toys to life and power monster cities. 
The theme of emotions as sources of power comes up again and again in Pixar's movies. Another theme that pops up repeatedly involves wood. Yep, that's stuff you knock on. In the Pixar universe, wood often seems to have magical properties. Not only is the witch from Brave a wood carver, the monsters in Monsters, Inc. use wooden doors to travel into the human world. In fact, when Mike and Sully are banished, the doors they're sent through is metal, so it can take them somewhere, but they can't get back. One of the most interesting examples of the magic of wood comes from the sapling Wally plants in the ground at the end of his self-titled movie. Eagle-eyed fans have noticed that the sapling bears a strong resemblance to the full-grown tree featured in A Bug's Life. The tree serves as the source for Flick's inventions. And some fans even believe that the tree is the one that Carl and Ellie picnic under in Up. The movie Monsters, Inc. has been the linchpin in many of the theories we've talked about in this video, and this last one is no different. This theory connects Monsters, Inc. to Toy Story. It says that Randall Boggs, the villain who tries to thwart Sully and Mike's plans for Boo, is actually Andy's monster. In a sequence at the beginning of Monsters, Inc., Randall is seen practicing his camouflage technique for future scaring missions, and the wallpaper pattern he camouflages himself against is the wallpaper pattern we've seen in Andy's room in Toy Story. That seems like pretty solid evidence to us. Plus, we know that the two movies are connected for another reason. When Boo welcomes Sully into her bedroom, one of the toys on her bedroom floor is none other than Toy Story's Jessie. Which of these Disney Pixar Universe theories do you think are true? Are there others that we didn't cover? Sharing is caring, so have at it in the comments. And before you go, don't forget to give us a big thumbs up and subscribe to The Binger for more awesome videos. Thanks for watching.